Washington Grown is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Agriculture's Specialty Crop Block Grant Program and Northwest Farm Credit Services, supporting agriculture and rural communities with reliable, consistent credit and financial services today and tomorrow. Hi everyone, I'm Christy Gordson and welcome to Washington Grown. We all use herbs like basil, mint, and cilantro to flavor our food, but herbs are also good for our health and the environment. In this episode, we're gonna find out all the healthy and creative ways we're using herbs here in Washington State. We'll visit Brunchinette in Spokane to make some sweet treats using Washington mint. Can I lick the spoon? Yeah, if you want to. Then Val will be at Steel Wheel Farm helping with planting cilantro seed. Woo! That's hard work! And we'll learn about the WSU program that's helping to grow plants in space. If we go to colonize the, the moon or colonize Mars, you're going to have to have some sort of system in place where you're able to grow plants. All this and much more today on Washington Grown. We grow them big oh, yeah, in Washington. Yeah. You're like, I can put her to work. Right now. Oh yeah. <laughs> Are you getting tired already? No. I <laughs> Am I doing this right? It's like Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory. This is one of the hardest things I've ever done on this show. Cheers. Thanks for having us. Calling all brunch lovers, we're visiting the sweet and savory Spokane spot, Brunchinette. This homey restaurant is the perfect stop for all your breakfast and lunch favorites, and Spokaneites can't get enough. Very homey and it's like you're in somebody's kitchen. Like a hometown inviting upscale diner. Makes you want to sit down and have a meal. It's always super friendly and it just seems like everyone who's in here is having a great time. It's super welcoming and we kind of invite everyone in to have brunch with us. Co-owners and chefs Joy Lee and Alan started catering in 2011. Then they added a food truck and opened Brunchinette just five years later. Our grand opening, soft opening, was not a soft opening. It was, not. It was, it was, it was a so busy. crazy opening. Yeah. When we opened the doors, we were only expecting probably like 40, 50 people to walk through the whole entire day. And we were packed from open to close. As soon as they opened, it became my hands down favorite place to come for breakfast. It's really hard to choose because everything that I've had is, is really amazing. Today I had the Monte Cristo French toast. Biscuits and gravy with the chorizo gravy. The hash or the chicken and waffles, my go-to for breakfast. I got the palm frites burrito but it has uh, shoestring french fries inside. It's homemade, lots of flavor. The stuff that's local is the freshest, so in that, it's gonna portray itself on the plate. I think we really care about what we're serving, just mostly because we like to eat ourselves, mm -hmm. and so why not serve really good products to everyone else? Right. And later in the show, Chef Allen and I will be making a sweet dish that's packed with flavor. Donuts stuffed with cream cheese frosting and lemon mint curd. Oh, that's really Are you good. cheering up, man? I that's am. good a stuff, bit. isn't it? A little bit, I am. <laughs> we think about them in jars at the grocery store and flavors in our food. But how about herbs growing in the ground? Today, I'm chatting with Ryan Litnature at Steel Wheel Farm, where they grow fresh, local, and organically grown items. This is a beautiful greenhouse. What are we looking at? This is our fall planting, so we're, we're getting ready to plant fall crops right now. Wow. Ryan and his team work hard to grow a variety of produce all year around, including celery, tomatoes, fennel, squash, radishes, and of course, fresh herbs. So how did you get uh, interested in farming? What was your inspiration? Uh, that's a great question. I, about 10 years ago, I purchased an antique tractor and that kind of started my farming career. Using his tractor, Ryan worked on a farm down the road and learned how to grow vegetables there. With that experience and a love for landscaping, he then started Still Will Farm. To save on cost as a small business, they grow most of their crops from seed. It's a way for us to control all the inputs that mm -hmm. um, go into growing and we produce everything with organic standards. This is a paper pot transplanting system that we invested in this year. Mm -hmm. um, basically, it's a paper chain that we oh. seed each individual seed into. Ryan even showed me how they seed cilantro. 
First, we spread the tray into a bracket and fill each hole with soil. Oh, this is soothing. I like this. Great, we have like 600 more to do, so <laughs> hope you have some extra time. All right. Hello, all. So now what we're going to do is uh, just make little divots. All right. It's a tedious process, isn't it? Yeah, but you know, there's something relaxing and nurturing about this. Definitely. There's a lot of time to think about things when you're farming. Mm -hmm. And then the last step is to water, water it, it and wait for them to grow. Ready to go. Now I get to roll up my sleeves and learn how to direct seed cilantro outside in the field. So now you make it look really easy, Ryan, and that's always a little scary for me. It looks good. Am I doing this right? Woo, that's hard work. If you just want to look in here, mm -hmm. You can oh see the seeds. Oh my gosh! Oh, that's amazing. They're there. Hot diggity dog. So the first step is this, and as soon as the seed germinates, it can take about 30 to 40 days before we harvest it. Oh, okay. And we'll cut those, we'll do small bunches, and we'll sell them at the farmer's markets. Cilantro is a very popular crop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everybody wants it. One of the reasons we plant cilantro in our fields is not just to harvest it and sell it, it's to bring in beneficial insects. Oh. The flowers are really fragrant and the bees and pollinators love that stuff. Ryan has put a lot of hard work and money into the soil on the farm. But one challenge is that they have to lease their land rather than own it. It's very difficult to purchase property in King County, especially farmland. There's not a lot available, mm. um, but it's also very expensive. Mm -hmm. I would eventually love to own property someday yeah. to be able to pass it on. I'm amazed how despite all of the challenges they face, Ryan still manages to make it all come together to make a living. I mean, you only have nine acres here. Do you work 24-7? Pretty, pretty much. It sounds yeah. like it. We sell right now at three different farmer's markets. One in Issaquah, which is just over the hill. Mm -hmm. And then we sell at two markets in Seattle. We also have a roadside farm stand uh -huh. um, right outside the farm here in Fall City. You can support local farms like Steel Will by going to the farm stands to get their fresh food. Thank you so much for sharing this with us and letting me play a farmer for a moment. <laughs> My pleasure. And continued success. I'm here with Chef Kirsten Helly Sandoval in your home kitchen, talking about fresh herbs and, and, and how you like to use them, right? Yes. And why fresh? Oh, it just brightens the flavors. And I find when you're trying to cut back on salt, and get all this healthy food. Sometimes people are like, eh, the flavor is not so amazing. So tons of fresh herbs, they brighten the flavor and they actually are a huge boost of nutrients as well. Really? So you're getting the health benefits and a big boost of flavor. Exactly. Sounds like. Yep. And you, you are a personal chef for a lot of people. Tell me about that. Yeah. So I am a private chef for professional athletes mm -hmm. and high profile clients. Um, I've worked with several of the Seattle Seahawks over the years. I private chef for Isaiah Thomas right now. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I get, I work with their doctors and trainers. Yeah. And I get told to get them to eat lots of healthy food. Mm -hmm. And I'm usually getting guys that have been able to eat whatever they want their whole life. And, um, cause they're athletes. Yeah. And eventually they hit it age where they're like, okay, I've got to start. <laughs> we all do. <laughs> While cooking for her clients, Kirsten started to experiment in the kitchen, creating flavorful sauces based around her players' individual cultural backgrounds. She soon perfected the recipes and Mesa de Vida was born. Mesa de Vida. Yeah. And so these are what exactly? They are cooking sauces and flavor bases. Okay. Herbs play a huge part in each and every one of these sauces mm -hmm. and each region has its own kind of component of herbs that yeah. are classic. I asked Kirsten to show me a sneak peek of one of her sauce recipes. Well, this is just actually how I make these sauces, how okay. I've made them in my clients' uh -huh. kitchens for years and now we have a big commercial kitchen that makes them for us. So just some carrots and a little bit of tomato paste, herbs, then bell okay. peppers. Yum. Again, sneaking all those antioxidants and vitamins. Oh, and I in love my guys. how colorful everything is. Oh, it's delicious. Especially and when you eat fresh, good. it's always colorful. It seems like absolutely. Yeah. And this one, where I would put like some lime juice in mm -hmm. there and all of that, and then your uh, dried herbs because they really bloom okay. in the sauce, which is nice and spices. But okay. Nice. That's it. That's it. So anytime you're cooking a soup or a stew, mm -hmm. add a little bit of this to the, when you first start cooking mm -hmm. your meat or your vegetables, absolutely delicious. Love Big it. fan of sauces. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I mean, you have so much experience with, you know, healthy cooking. What got you into that in the first place? 
Uh, I wasn't always into healthy cooking by any means, so by the time I was about 23 years old, I was clinically obese. I uh, decided to cut out processed foods, and that was uh, the beginning of my career, and also the beginning of just learning to appreciate healthy food. I ended up losing 100 pounds. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I think our bodies are meant to enjoy these colorful, mm -hmm. vibrant things. They they're like, I mean, herbs were medicine back in the day. Yeah. So yeah, definitely can add a lot to our lives. Healthy food truly changed my life. That's awesome. Yeah. And now absolutely. you're doing it for other people, which yep. is great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I grow cilantro in Fall City, but if I grew it in Europe, it would be called something else. Find out what when we return. Coming up, we're making sweet treats using Washington mint. Can I lick the spoon? Yeah, if you want to. And we'll be in the second Harvest Kitchen, trying out a viewer's recipe that uses dry herbs you can find right in your pantry. The word cilantro is Spanish for coriander. In the Americas, we call it cilantro, and in the rest of the world calls it coriander. We're back at Brunchinette in Spokane for unique brunch items that are filled with flavor. This popular and inviting spot was created by the owner and chef duo, Joy Lee and Alan, who always bring their passion for food to the plate. So we try to make everything from scratch as much as possible. And so we really based our business on creating food that you know other people would enjoy and stuff that we would really enjoy making ourselves too. And people are enjoying their food all throughout the Spokane community. We started up our catering company and then we started up our food truck and then we started up Brunchnet. And that's the couple of chefs, right? That's So tell me a little bit about that. So I'm actually a pastry chef Okay. and he does all the savory stuff. Mm -hmm. So we were a really good combination of sweet and savory when it came to ideas. Uh, you can get your traditional stuff in the breakfast like pancakes, but I also like that they feature different things depending on the time of the year. It's homemade, lots of flavor, and it is made with love. It's really hard to choose because everything that I've had is it's really amazing. So what are we gonna make today? <laughs> today we're doing a, something a little bit more on the sweet side. Lemon mint curd, okay. and we're serving that with um, donuts that we're stuffing with cream cheese frosting. And they're gonna go in my mouth and in my tummy, and yes. I'm gonna be very happy. Yes, very much so. <laughs> okay. We start off by making the dough by bringing milk, butter, sugar, and salt to a boil. Tell me about like working with herbs in you know your your cooking fresh herbs mm -hmm. i would say is about 50 percent of what we do in general the mint yeah. right now is coming from yakima valley washington state's the number one producer of yeah. mint how does the mint work with this dish we're going to infuse a little bit of lemon juice with the mint over oh, okay. a couple hours mm -hmm. next chef allen adds flour to the dough this is what is actually technically called pot of shoe pot of shoe and then pot of shoe, once it actually gets cooked, it's gonna kind of be airy in the middle of it. Okay. And then you can fill it like an eclair, you can fill it like a cream puff. And then we're gonna cut the heat on just a little bit because we're gonna try to want to make it nutty. Nutty. So when you have that aroma of like almost done popcorn. Okay. Um, that's really what we're wanting. Yeah, that's what you want. Once you start to fry this, it's actually gonna, from all the moisture on the inside, it's gonna puff up. So right now, as you can see, yeah, totally. it's gone down a little bit more. A little it's bit, gone yeah. changed a little more. If you wanna smell that, it's a little bit more nutty. Oh yeah. Then we stir the dough in the mixer until it cools down. Because okay. if we put the eggs in too early, then the eggs are just gonna curdle yeah, yeah. and it's gonna be no good. Yeah. Next, we start on our lemon curd by mixing together eggs, sugar, and the strained out lemon juice infused with mint. So we're gonna put this on and we're just gonna kind of whisk it. Once the curd reaches 180 degrees, we take it off the heat and then add butter and lemon zest. So just whisk it all together mm -hmm. and let the butter melt, and then you have a lemon curd. I can't wait to try it. We put the lemon curd in the fridge to cool and get back to our dough. Chef Allen slowly adds eggs into the dough and mixes for a few minutes. So we've got to the point where it's really silky. Okay. And then we're gonna do the V test. Yeah. And kind of pull it up and see where it's kind of Sticking to? Yeah. And there you go. Yeah. Nice and silky and beef. Awesome. Chef Allen then scoops balls of dough into the fryer. And so, how do you know when they're ready to go? When they're ready to go, they're splitting open and they're hollow. Awesome. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take a piping bag, which is filled with uh, cream cheese buttercream. Okay. Oh. <laughs> do you serve something like this at Frenchinette? This is going to be a special. After we fill them, Chef Allen rolls them in powdered sugar. Then I spread some lemon curd on the plate. Can I lick the spoon? Yeah, if you want to. With a little fresh Washington chiffonade mint on top, we're ready to taste. Oh, look at that. 
It's all melty. <laughs> that is heaven. That is really good. Oh, that was really Are good. Are you tearing up, man? I That's am. good a stuff, bit. isn't it? A little bit, I am. <laughs> I like it when the plan comes together. Because you get the fat from the in the middle of it from the cream cheese frosting, and then you get the zest yeah. and the acid from the lemon curd that's on the bottom. And one of the best things you can ever do is have fat with acid. Mm -hmm. And you get the mint from Yakima, so that's the best part. Holy cow. Thank you so much. You're welcome. To get the recipe for Brunchinette's lemon mint donuts, go to wagrown.com. aren't just the oregano on your pizza or the peppermint in your tea. Herbs are important crops and they play a key role in foods, beverages, and medicines. Some of the fresh herbs you'll find here in Washington State include parsley, chives, basil, cilantro, rosemary, sage, and thyme. And our produce manager, Ralph, has some tips to make your herbs last longer. Fresh herbs are a great addition to your cooking, but they don't last forever. One of the best ways to help it last, hang it upside down, let it dry up, and you'll have it preserved for about six to 10 months. Some herbs were once believed to be magical, and children would hide behind patches of them, hoping to find fairies. If you think about it, they are kind of magical. Herbalists have been using them in medicines for several millennia. You can even make your own herbal remedies at home. Now for a cold, mix a cinnamon stick with ginger, chamomile tea, and a pinch of cayenne pepper. If you have a headache, steep peppermint leaves in boiling water. Inhaling the smell will open up the blood vessels that cause headaches. And once you're feeling better, grab a slice of pizza, but don't forget the oregano. Coming up, we're learning about the future of agriculture, farming in zero gravity. Hashtag Astro Farmer. I yeah, love it, yeah. Right. yeah. Hey, let's go. So we came across this food truck called Barrio Luchador, who's serving some of my favorite dishes, the classic street taco. Now, not only are these guys using incredible herbs and spices, but did I mention they're also in a food hall? So Chef Daniel, we're here at the Lincoln South Food Hall in downtown Bellevue, and you are the owner, chef, purveyor of a lot of restaurants here, aren't you? Yes, uh, I am the executive chef. I'm overseeing all six of these concepts where we're bringing uh, local fast casual items to everybody. Now on your tacos, we're talking Mexican street tacos and one of the key ingredients in a classic Mexican street taco is a little herb known as... Cilantro. <laughs> there you go. So tell me, where do you get your cilantro from? The cilantro is usually picked the day before and brought straight to us uh, within 24 hours. And I go through about <laughs> case of cilantro a day. So we're talking about 30 pounds easily of cilantro. We're just chopping on a daily basis. Let's see what people think of these cilantro top tacos. I'm gonna have you pick up that taco right there. All right. This is really good. I can I can feel the flavor. Very, very good. So Highly this, recommend. Are you a big fan of cilantro? Not normally, it, not not if there's too much, but that's just the right amount. Good, so it's there, but it doesn't yeah. kick you in the butt. Yeah. <laughs> and then you add a little bit of cilantro in there. Good. It's a very nice balance. So you're a big cilantro fan and you can recommend it on those. I should have tried it before. <laughs> I would have ordered one more. <laughs> well, we're at Washington State University and I'm with WSU professor Dr. Norman Lewis and his crew here today. And we are talking about your program, The Final Frontier Plant Habitat. What is that exactly? So the um, plant habitat, it's called um, APH, it's called the Advanced Plant Habitat. Mm -hmm. It's the most sophisticated um, piece of instrumentation that's been put onto space station to attempt to grow plants as normally as they could, you know, that we would normally grow on Earth. Dr. Lewis and his international team work with NASA and the Kennedy Space Center in Florida to monitor the plant habitat and review the data sent back by the astronauts. In the case of space station, we can grow a plant from germinating the seed in the plant system we use right to where, where it comes to you know, mature and, um, and, and it goes full cycle. Why do you want to know what happens to plants in space? 
Why is that important? If we go to colonize the, the moon or colonize Mars, you're going to have to have some sort of system in place where you're able to grow, grow plants. Not only is this research good for science and discovery, it's also good for the psyche of the astronauts on the space station. When they see the ability to, 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 to grow a plant and to smell it and sometimes taste it, it brings that feeling of Earth back home again. Yeah. yeah. So there's the aesthetic aspects and, and, and you know, psychological aspects of, of, of doing these things as well. They can grow something. They can grow something, yeah. yeah. They're using a plant called Arabidopsis, which is a great plant to study in this microgravity environment. Is it edible? Uh, no, no, not for humans, uh, but it belongs to the the cabbage, uh, the cabbage family. Oh, yeah, you would need a lot of it to make a salad. Put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Hashtag Astro Farmer. I yeah, love it. Yeah, yeah. Right. The team is also including students from a school in Sacramento, California, along the way, who learn about science and math with Dr. Lewis's team. I love yeah. how I mean, just uh, kind of worldwide representation here too, because it it is interesting for everybody here on Earth. That's right, yeah. that's exactly right. Well, science is a global, science is a global, yeah. you know, challenge, yeah. Hi everyone, Tomas and I are here at the Kitchen at Second Harvest and we're joined by Laurent Zerati, the chef and owner of Fleur de Sel Restaurant and Crepery. Thanks for being here. Good to see you, Chris. It's a good place. Yeah, it's a good place. thank you, Tomas. Yeah. <laughs> and we all get to uh, taste a recipe that has been sent in by one of our viewers of Washington Grown and it has to do with you know, specific ingredients. And today we're going to be talking about herbs and, uh, you know, a lot of Herbs are grown in Washington, yep. cilantro and parsley and mint. Think of mint, mint is that's the right. Biggest, mint is the big yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, it is. And it's I have yeah. a bunch in my yard. I, I love to cook with herbs, you know, in the summer you have yeah. all those yeah. fresh herbs. Yeah. You can dry them out for the winter, you use them dry in, in, the, in the off season. It brings so much flavor to the dish. Yeah, you can always surprise people with an herb when they don't expect it. It's yeah. a traditional dish, yeah. and then you throw a little herb that yeah. they're not quite familiar with. Like, Whoa, why is this so good? Well, it's because I put fresh thyme exactly. in it. Exactly. Exactly, yes. So yes. I was going to say, what's the difference, you know, Laurent, like from using fresh and dried? Do you have to use more fresh than dried? or how I think do you... the, the flavor is completely different. 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 And fresh herbs, uh, you can even grow at home, you have a, yeah. you can have a little garden at home inside That's all year so nice. round, yeah. Yeah. and uh, you cut a little uh, sprig of herbs. You put it at the finish uh, of your dish. Like uh, Thomas said, it makes the whole difference of the dish, and I think uh, uh, we should encourage people to do that at home. So a lot of herbs in this dish. This is from Lori, and it's jalapeno popper pasta. Mm. Right? Next. Ooh, some Sounds spice good. To me. <laughs> so we get to taste that, but first we need to see how the jalapeno popper pasta by Lori is made. Okay, we are ready because that looks delicious, right? Ooh, and cheese. So it smells <laughs> good. It does. And, uh, and we are pasta. going for it. That's right. With some fresh cilantro mm. in there. Mmm, that's nice. Mm. 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 Oh, I like it. It's so, the jalapeno mm -hmm. is so, it's not too, too spicy. I, I don't eat very hot food. 
but that I can Ooh, take. It's yeah, a there we go. <laughs> yes, exactly. And it's the, the cream mellows the, the, mm -hmm. the, the heat yeah. of the of the mm. pepper. I love it. Okay. This is good. I like the bacon in it too. Well, that adds a nice well, little. Not yeah, the bacon. <laughs> it has bacon mess. in yeah. it. There are seven strips of bacon. Thank you, Lori. We appreciate that. Oh, <laughs> everything's good. good with bacon. That's right. We could kick that up to 14, maybe. <laughs> and a lot of herbs, a lot of dried herbs she yep. puts in here, but as well as fresh cilantro. Yeah, so. cilantro and, uh, and jalapeno is a good combination. Does this dish remind well, you of anything that you've done I think done it's, uh, it's uh, a macaroni and cheese on uh, steroids. Yeah. <laughs> you know? That's good. It's, uh, it's the classic American dish revisited. Yeah. And uh, I think it has a, a different... Uh, a layer of taste because of the complexity of the bacon, the jalapenos, yeah. the cilantro, the fresh herbs, the dry herbs, all the dry spices also in it. Yeah. She put some garlic mm -hmm. powder mm -hmm. and that cream cheese just is yeah. creamy enough. This is good. It's like comfort food. Very much, very much so. This is a, like a is cold it not, winter day. Yes. This will warm you up. Yeah. It's nothing really feels overbearing. I no. think she did a great job of making sure that everything is represented equally in this dish. Oh, I it's think nice. it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. nice. I would like to do that at the restaurant. Yeah. You know? ah. <laughs> can you put, can you put Sorry, that in a crepe? Can you put that in a crepe? Oh, I could, you know. <laughs> well, thank you, Lori. To get Lori's recipe for jalapeno popper pasta, visit wagrone.com. So whether you use herbs to flavor your food or boost your health, Washington Grown Herbs are full of great surprises. That's it for this episode of Washington Grown. Thanks for watching.